words and titles. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Russ, for uh, speaking of disparities. Um, some of you may have read the Santa Barbara Independent last week, and if you did, you might have seen that Carrie Matsuoka wrote, uh, when I look at our advanced placement classes, do I see the same ratio, same mix of Latino students and white students that I see in the community? I do not. You could say the same thing for our high quality intensive mental health programs, and you could say the same thing for our juvenile hall. Racial and ethnic disparities exist in every institution, in every community <coughs> across the United States. And they're gonna always exist. That's because humans are human, and we have instincts that protect us. The issue of disproportionality is complex, and it's going to take tremendous optimism and relentless tenacity to solve this problem. From my work in Santa Barbara County, I have learned that when there are different numbers of kids, that can be associated with disparities in treatment. And if we look at why those disparities exist, we might be able to identify the policies and procedures that can change and that can lead to better services for everyone. <coughs> so tonight, I'm gonna to give you some examples from our work in Lompoc and Santa Maria as examples about how identifying these disparities can transform systems and help all children. So the first step to addressing these disparities is recognizing that they exist. We are very lucky to live in Santa Barbara for so many reasons, but one of those reasons is because this, the agencies that are serving our most vulnerable youth here in Santa Barbara County recognize that there are disparities in the systems, and they're actively working to address these disparities. For example, Santa Barbara County Probation applied and got a grant from the California State Board of Community Corrections to work on addressing these disparities. They not only wanted to look at their own juvenile justice system, they wanted to work with schools, mental health, and child welfare to figure out how everyone's contributing. So tonight I'm gonna to focus on education. What are the top two issues that lead to disproportionality in Santa Barbara County? Number one, zero tolerance discipline policies, and number two, English language development. I'll tell you a bit more about each one. So in terms of zero tolerance discipline, in Lompoc, the data showed us that responses were almost exclusively punitive, and that youth of color were more likely than others to receive subjective discipline um, offenses. Now, subjective offenses are things like defiance. Some teachers might see defiance as a cry for help. Other teachers might see it as rude and disrespectful and deserving of, con of consequences. <laughs> the data also showed that there were less disparities in more concrete behaviors like physical fighting. In addition, responses were more severe for youth of color for the same offense. So disparities in subjective discipline are common across school systems, and they may be because teachers are white, primarily white, and students are of color, and there may be some kind of cultural mismatch there. But zero tolerance anything fails to consider the many reasons why a behavior occurs. When I was in school, I was successfully controlled by the threat of a punishment. I have to admit, I got benched once in third grade for throwing wads of toilet paper up on the ceiling, and I was successfully humiliated into never misbehaving again in school. Zero tolerance policies work for 80% of school children, but why don't they work for everybody? <laughs> I was a strong student, didn't experience trauma, had a comfortable home environment, but not all children are that lucky. For example, some kids have neurological or emotional needs that must be met, and for a student struggling, sending them home isn't going to help them learn. Our most vulnerable children need more nurturing discipline strategies that teach and reinforce appropriate behavior, or that allow students to voice their frustration and heal from struggles they're having with peers or teachers. Research proves that zero tolerance policies lead to dropout, to delinquency, and overall unhealthy school climate for everyone. So what are we gonna do about it? I'm pleased to report that Lompoc is working on new discipline policies and approaches to treating their students who are struggling. 
So number two, English language development. Although the population of Santa Maria is diverse in the data, most of the students' racial and ethnic backgrounds are characterized as Latino. So it was difficult to see what racial and ethnic disparities existed. What we did find was that among Latino students, students who were English language learners were more likely to receive discipline infractions. So why are English language learners struggling? Frustrated with the trials and tribulations of bilingual education, California, the state of California threw out the baby with the bathwater and passed legislation requiring English-only instruction. The myth was that children needed to be fully immersed in English and only taught in English in order to succeed in school. The problem is that parents internalized this message and they thought they shouldn't speak to their children in their strongest language for fear that it would harm their educational chances. Ironically, their children ended up struggling to learn English with low skills in any language and had difficulty communicating even with their parents. It's much easier to teach concepts related to numbers, colors, and shapes when the material can be translated from one language to another. But developing these concepts from scratch is an entirely different ballgame and one that our schools are not prepared to play. This is one reason why students who are English language learners are overrepresented in special education, um, are more likely to drop out, and are less likely to excel academically. So how does English language development relate to high school discipline? There are many different possible reasons, and two stand out for me because we found that discipline consequences were more severe for English language learners, even for the same offense. So number one, there may be misunderstandings between <coughs> teachers and students because what's acceptable in one culture can be different and not acceptable in another culture. Also, school professionals, like all of us, have internalized the implicit biases of our communities. School professionals, therefore, may notice the misbehavior of students of color or students who are English language learners more than they would notice the misbehavior of a student that looked or talked or acted like them. And what are we gonna do about it? So I'm pleased to report that Santa Maria Joint Union High School District is now prioritizing English language development. And both Lompoc and Santa Maria are working with Just Communities to develop programs that help students, parents, and teachers understand and address disparities in their schools. So in conclusion, equity does not mean that every service has to be equal. Equity means that services are tailored to the unique needs and cultural context of every student and each student in the schools. So if you want to learn more, please email me, and I'd be happy to share additional details of this work. Thank you.